Well, my mom went and to Charlie Boys. We did actually replace the bearing. Uh, so we're putting a new bearing in. This is the old one um, because it is out. We got new seals, the bell housing, and uh, the, I think it's the pressure plate that holds the bearing in. Anyways, this one right here. We got both those. And Kristoff is underneath here if he wants to show them. It wasn't him that broke the crank. Nope, but I did put the new, I, well, I took the old seal out. And we're gonna put the new one back in it and call it a good one. Someone gouged the crank a little bit. Yeah, so you can't really tell the camera. Oh. Um, but uh, you gotta be careful when you pull the seals out with a screwdriver and hammer. Not I really. think that was a grind. Uh, I don't think that was a screwdriver. Someone grinded that was, it? That was something different. Ah, uh, they definitely fucked it up. Okay. So, anyways, he's putting the new seal on. We use this tool right here to uh, push it on handy not they use a hammer and a punch for that's for the crank seal that's in there and i'm gonna slap this bearing in i'm almost back on but christoph is gonna record using that tool to get this in and hopefully this will solve some of our oil leak problems it's not gonna solve all of it because i oh definitely it has more oil. it has more oil leaks um but um we'll fix it I guess now that I showed on camera the weld that I'm fixing on here, <laughs> um, this is another reason the battery box is off. <laughs> I am fixing this right here. It stops right here. But we go a little bit more to so make sure. When you got double flames. Make sometimes. sure it's good. Um, last, no, two years ago, two winters and now it's already that much. Um, it was right here, back like two feet, it cracked, so we had to do that. It's the problem you have with double frames. Um, so we take an air hammer. I already cleaned it up, but I knocked all the steel out, get it all flush. That way you can, you can actually see through it now. And you grind into it till you're all the way through. <laughs> what did you just do? <laughs> the middle finger through there. I didn't even see it. Um, anyways, you grind it till you're all the way through and then you 100% weld that thing. So it's pure weld and it's good. And then you go through with a sanding wheel you want to move so and that way up. nobody really sees it the only reason someone's gonna see it is because my dumbass accidentally showed it on camera and I'm gonna <laughs> put it on YouTube but you know the second frame on the inside is not cracked um, but you know that's the struggle with having a double frame going with the heavy-duty single frame which is what they kind of have now back in the day they didn't really have that as much the thick thick single frame it was Either just the lighter one, or you get the this double frames. The, you go. Yeah, I'm done talking. You sure? Wow. All right, this is the push. I already bought the other half on the crankshaft. It has three bolts on it. It lines up perfectly, and then you stick this on it, and then you suck it in. Definitely You're, better than the punch. Yep. This is the old seal. It's really leaking now, and then that's the kind of the ring that was on the crank. But uh, we are borrowing this tool. Yes, it is not ours, ours, but they were nice. But I'm happy they let us use it. Yep. So he'll show using that. We're gonna slap this seal on, on and this over this piece, push it in, and we'll put the tool on it, and that's gonna suck it in all the way, hopefully. Nice and straight. We'll have to get a wrench to this. What is that? I should get that before I tighten it. Hopefully it goes on nicely and straight. Looks like it. Too bad. Okay. We even tapped a little bit so it goes on a little easier. Huh? Sounds like a loud tap. 
right? It's a little love tap. But I think, my dear. We'll take it off, check. We're good. We'll leave it. Tiny bit more. It was a little bit more in it. Yep. She's good. Look at that. All done. And I didn't even ruin the seal. This morning, we're going to be doing the loader tires. We got four new ones here. We actually got these, I think, right around Thanksgiving. There was a sale going. Uh, and when we bought all four, we got a little bit of a discount, so we bought all four. So we're going to be changing those out on the loader here. We're not going to do these tires ourselves. So we have Tom Ryan here. He does uh, a lot of tires and other stuff too. But uh, we did one tire a couple months ago. We can do it, but we really don't want to. So we're having him help. Um, the problem, this tire is flat as you saw, but the other side, that one is about, it's almost dangerous, it's so bald. Because this thing could blow it actually any second. It's not very much left. Um, and it's all, in the last week it got really bad because when I called to make an appointment, there was like one wire showing, and in the last week it really it ate it up, so. That is good, we're changing them. I did have to fix these front fenders. Um, they got smashed on the bunks and they were down here so we couldn't replace the tires. So I had to do that before we actually did the tires. So I did both of those last, or two weeks ago. Yeah. So he's got a little tool that works on a gun to break that bead. Different than the one we own. He has that one too, but this works better for these ones. It took a little bit of extra love and we needed two tools, but she did not want to pop off. Took a little extra work. These beads are known for sticking. Well, I didn't record for the last little bit because it was a pain to get the bead off. Took a little while to get the other rim out. So he's grinding that. I did grind this ring for him in the shop, but he grinded he grinded this one up so it's all clean. The height difference is about this much. It was standing, but he set it down to use as a bench. This tire is sitting like down here when it's next to each other. I'll show you with a different one. Have that happen? <laughs> no, because I've done it myself and it sucked. So he's marking those nubs because there's nubs on here. And if you put them in the wrong spot, and we've done it ourselves, and he's done it himself too, um, if you wedge it wrong, it is a pain in the ass to get them out. And when we did it, we actually had to weld chains onto this and yank it back off of the skid steer because we screwed up so bad. So you don't want to mess up. You gotta you gotta line these uh, wedges up correctly, and that stops it from being able to spin and everything too. So he lubed up these beads. No such thing as too much lube for this. Yeah, okay. Now hold that tire, we're gonna lower it down. We're gonna push it on and then jack it back. I'm recording small bits here and there, but for the most part, it's just putting tires on. Okay. Put this away. So we're back on to having the tire off. Oh, you're doing it out here, huh? Yeah, but we, we just took it off because when we went to mount it, we couldn't get the ring on and it was going on hard, so we pulled it back off. Oh, it wasn't lined up? It, it wasn't lined up, plus there was a gouge somewhere on this edge, so it wouldn't pop. Oh. And then we actually didn't mark the the lips right. You know how you get it off if you mess up, Tom? <laughs> a skid you, you weld a skid steer chain to it, <laughs> yeah. and you fucking yank. <laughs> Alright, but yeah, we're... These are the things that 
you don't see with the tire process, but happen very often. That's why tires are expensive to change. Yeah. Because not everybody's lining up to do this. Yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. There nothing's, oh, yeah. nothing's light about it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So when we put this back on. Uh, I'll put this down. Uh, I'll put it right here. Ferdy's going to the barn. Yeah. We're actually putting another section of mat, another group, second herd is getting uh, the same mats we did in first. Yeah. So he's doing a bunch of work to get it prepped for that. So hopefully next week, mats will be going in that barn. That's the plan. Or that group. So he lubed up this ring. And that goes right in this dish. See that little dip right there? That's, it pops in. He's a little, he's getting there. Not on the outside yeah, one. It goes in there because see this is where your locking ring sits. And then you want to grease this again so that way when your tire goes on, it lubricates over the O-ring. It doesn't roll it right off. Because if it rolls it off, it won't seat air properly. The less chances for a leak. That's it. And it'll seat better too with more lube. We only have three more to go. <laughs> I'm not going to record every single one the whole step because this will be a three hour video. But we'll keep it short so everybody thinks the job got done in a half hour. That'll be the way. So she's ready for air. Let the compressor build up a little bit. He just started that so she's low. But um, he slapped his chloride gun on there because it's a bigger nozzle. We have one in our other shop where when at the shitty tires went soft we'd fill them up but it's not up here at this shop but that gets just as much air in um well actually that gets more air in than our air filler now we want to make sure it's coming over that ring properly which it is see now the tire's coming out the nice thing with these is they basically take air almost every time you see that you can see it going out That pumps air faster than our air nozzle. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be that much faster. Yeah. He switched over the air fitting. He put the valve back. No, he's about to put the valve back in. But he filled the air with no valve in there because it's like twice as fast filling. And then he has an adapter used on the pressure gauge. One tire down. Just three more to go. We, we moved the bucket earlier. That way we could actually work in the front because with it down, you had zero room in here. It was a pain in the ass. But we'll get this side done and then probably spin it around. That way the tires are near his uh, truck for air and stuff and do the other side. We got the second one off. It honestly went easier than the first one. Just getting the second bead off now. This one slipped off. The other one it wouldn't come off right away. So it's being a pain in the butt when it was on the other tire. This is the only tire that hasn't been touched in the last couple months. So this bead might be a pain. The other three all leaked in the past month. So we had to fix them. So he's using his 
impact tool. You can see it's coming out slower. But he's really on there. They don't just pop off. I just got done saying they don't pop off. Yeah. They do make a specific tool for this, but yeah, they, do they don't hand that out. No, I think that's a couple grand. Um, and you know, we're, we don't do that many tires for that. All right. He's grinding up that rim. He already did that one. I wheeled this up real quick. There's a lot of rust on them. We gotta get them clean. So we're ready to lube it up and roll the new one over. Got number two done. We're actually just gonna move the jacks over and we'll get the last two done here. These two both have goo in them, so that'll make it fun because when we did these last time, Rebar went through both of these, finger size. That's why we had to do the tires back in uh, November. Um, so we slapped, we hashed it, and then we slapped some goo in it just to make sure these would hold. So it's gonna make a little bit of a mess, so we kept it for the end. Well, we are spinning it around just to make sure all our hoses are long enough. And if we've got a fight with uh, any of the tires on this side, at least it's near the truck and we can grab tools easier. But. The camera won't pick it up, but I can easily feel this machine leaning to the left because of the tire height difference. To give you a little comparison of the tires, these are about as wore down as you can possibly get them. So we're gonna roll this one up there. We're still working on getting that inside bead. Well, this one is a going much easier since we just did it a couple months ago. Marcus, what do you think? Hold it right there, you're right to the end. Okay, release it. And yep, it's working. And this pedal right here is what's running that. It hasn't moved on this side. Okay, stop. On the last one, it popped right off as soon as we got that bead going. Okay, stand the way. Oh, she's moving. There we go. Sometimes they have a long straight hill. This is the last tire. It's getting air. I didn't really record anymore because um, it's the same process. While he's firing up his uh, air compressor, she's sitting level. And we'll be on our merry way. And then hopefully these tires last another like... 6,000 hours. 6,000 hours? I'm hoping 15,000. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a feeding machine. Hopefully, we'll see. I'm gonna put in our. I'm gonna write down how many hours. It's at 29,000 something, and then we'll see the day that we do it. Tom just left. We just got these four tires changed in about four and a half hours, which is not bad at all for how hard some of these tires can come off. Looks good. Should be ready to roll again because uh the back one one of them was leaking already the last two weeks so they were just time to get changed 
Christos back working on this now, and I'm too I'm done with the tires. Tom is gone. Uh, he already put the flywheel in. So now he has to put this heavy clutch in. We do not have a clutch jack to borrow. So this is going in the old fashioned way. Muscles. If that's what we're gonna call them. <laughs> so we're gonna have to call them. Um, but what we do have is at least the, um, this is plastic. It's just a, a lining up shaft. So She goes in there and that keeps yeah, all- yeah, yeah, from the other side, because this has to bolt onto the flywheel through these. Yeah. But um, that keeps all these plates right here perfectly centered, because the only thing keeping them centered after will be the pressure. So that way when we put the transmission in, that shaft will actually slip all the way in, and we don't have to fight it right. trying to put that transmission in, because that we're going to have to fight enough anyways just to get it in there dealing with the cab mount bolts, because it was tight getting out. It's going to be just as tight getting in. Christoph is down here with the clutch. It's really only a one person job. Is it? <laughs> I like how you say is it, but there's really no way I can help you. Right. Right now he's really wish he had a clutch jet. <sighs> Better? Almost. Get in there, you, you son of a bitch. I need to at least put a bolt in there. Let's see. Where are they? I don't know. Where the fuck are they? Okay. Oh, yes. Slap a bolt in right here. That? Well, this fucking thing should go in there. Are you lined up correctly? I don't know. Oh, you gotta spin her down a little. Yep. Right. Oh yeah, we threads caught. Oh yeah. Oh god. Here's a, okay. Now it's gonna take a breather. You got one bolt here. Yeah. But that right there is how you do everything the hard way. That's how we like to do it, apparently. No. It's not how we like to do it, but that's how we end up doing it. Also, Kristoff got done welding the frame while I was doing the tires. I was gonna do this yesterday. But other projects came up when I got done grinding. <laughs> um, but he did this while I was helping Tom with the tires. So he welded it in and then he took the sanding attachment and basically made it smooth. And he even painted it. I got painted a couple more times. Yeah, but that's the first coat. What's that? Uh, you need a little? Yep, yeah, I'll grab it. But she's in there. Christoph's gonna put the clutch brake in. Definitely forgot about that. Would not have been a good day because it was gonna get the two piece um, a clutch brake in otherwise if we forgot to put it in because uh, we weren't gonna pull the transmission again. But luckily, he saw it just there because we're about to put on the, uh, the mounts now. So this is... I probably have to put the motor maybe a little bit. Oh, stupid cardboard. Nope, my... How does this even happen? <sighs> I guess if you put steady pressure on it, I'm gonna see if I can turn the motor a little bit. Yeah. Alright, well, what we did is the mount, rubber mounts, you can't see them at all, maybe Christoph will show it. But um, we took the rubbers out, so we gave ourselves about this much more room because it was too tight to push into the engine because it was hitting the rubbers. And then when we get it bolted together, we're gonna lift it all and just put the rubbers in again. So Christoph took a plier, he's actually waiting on me, but he's turning that shaft the way it lines up the input shaft of the transmission with the first click of the clutch. Because the cl good. clutch is all lined up, but he's gonna get the shaft started. Once we get it started, there's no more messing with that and it'll slip right in. But I gotta push it, and it should be good. Okay. We are a lot closer together if I'm being honest, we're about an hour into this and we've made it about three inches. Right. So this is like new territory. No, it's a pain in the ass. No, I'm saying that in a different meaning, but I know. Um, this is new territory for us. So it's going in hard. Um, but the problem is the engine's <laughs> angled this way. So you got to kind of angle the transmission with it and you're kind of working it uphill. 
because you can't fully straighten it because stuff hits up top and it's a pain in the butt. Hopefully so it will be done soon. Yes. Um, so yeah, it looks like we just did it in about two minutes, but honestly, it's been an hour. We are putting new ends on the linkage here. That is from the transmission to like the edge of the cab on the front for the clutch. These are the new ones. So that's the old one. It's a new one. Not only is the inside um, bushing right there gone, but this thing is egg shaped. And then on this side, it's one side where it pulls on is a, uh, it's all wore out. So we'll put two new ones on and it'll tighten up the linkage. It's running again. She's all back in there. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.